All right. Y'all come on in. Call him There we go. There he is. How's it going, Bishop? Man, I would take my hat off, but my hair is not as, as neat as yours. So, uh, listen, <laughs> but, the, but the hat's working, though. You working, the it working? Hat. It's working so for you. I'm so hot in this hat. All these light. I'm, <laughs> if I pass out, you just keep on going, okay? <laughs> yes, sir. We keep it moving. We keep the thing moving. That's all right. That'll work. That'll yes, work. sir. Man, I want to just appreciate your time. Uh, you've always been such a consistent uh, source of strength and encouragement uh, to my life, to my ministry. Uh, a few months ago, I was able to come on with you live uh, and do something very special. And so now I'm uh, honored to have you to come on and really just encourage, edify, and build up my followers. Uh, people all yes, over sir. the world know you, uh, but I want you to be able to speak into the lives of, of my followers uh, tonight. But I do want to, even though I do know you and you, you're a great friend and we have a blast, I do want to give uh, the people some formal information about who you are. Uh, yes, he sir. is referred to as the People's Bishop. The People's uh, Bishop. <laughs> he is approachable. Let's go. Uh oh, my, not step as far He's approachable, he's touchable. But I do want to quote uh, the Denver Post said that you are an architect of excellence. And I really do believe that uh, everything that you touch really to me just seems like it turns to gold. Uh, a pastor uh, that plants churches. Uh, you're a coach, you're an author, you're a philanthropist, you are an entrepreneur, but above all, you are my friend, my brother, my homie. Yes, uh, you also are the bishop uh, of the Harvest Fellowship of Churches, yes, uh, which is a, a global uh, impact that you're making. And so we're honored tonight to have you um, uh, on our live tonight. Y'all yes, make sure you call a friend, call a neighbor, tell them that we're getting ready to really be empowered by an awesome vessel uh, that God is using in the earth right now uh, to really help us navigate, if you would, and continue to go uh, through this pandemic, this pandemic, Bishop, I want to start out by, uh, I don't know if people know this. They probably just think you just physically fit like you ran in the Olympics or something, but <laughs> I want to address a little bit about fitness only because the right. underlying issues that the African-American African -American community uh, has up on us, which has adversely affected us as we uh, have been affected by uh, COVID-19. So just a little bit of, uh, if we could talk about fitness and the importance thereof. Absolutely. Uh, in our well, community. Yes, sir. Well, let me just first say, I am so glad to be with you. Honored to be with you. You know, we uh, we come, we come from the same stomping ground. Memphis. Yes, sir. 901. <laughs> 901. What's Absolutely. Up, John Gaston uh, Hospital. Come on, Cherry. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, so I'm just honored to be with you and appreciate you for everything you do, not just in gospel music, but in inspiring people that transcend gospel music. One of the things I appreciate most about you, you were doing a live the other evening with a gentleman. I didn't call the gentleman's name. It came up. I pulled it up because I was uh, I was finishing up something at the office and you were talking about the importance of musicians and having pastors and leadership. And what I appreciate about you and your contribution is that you you live what you say. And, uh, and I appreciate you for that and appreciate you just for your heart, your spirit and your openness to be. A lot of people get selfish when they have uh, platforms. You're not selfish with yours. So I just want to let you know, I appreciate you, uh, you man. before we get in. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, I believe it like this. In the hood, they say, when I eat, we all eat. And I, think, <laughs> I, like I just that. think when one of us is winning. All yeah. of us is winning. Matter of fact, yes, I sure. asked somebody to type that on the screen. If one wins, we all win. Come on now, Bishop. We all win. <laughs> we you all know, win. You got to have that mentality because there's enough for everybody to do well. Absolutely. So, this is the way I believe. But you're right. I lost 95 pounds. Mm. 95, 95 pounds. That's a whole person. That's a whole person. <laughs> Listen, I, I um, I was, uh, I used to refer to myself. Uh, the old version of me is big juicy, and this is the <laughs> slim fit version of myself. And I carried it like a middle linebacker, so mm -hmm. I carried it. But um, we were doing a Daniel fast in the church, and so at the end of that, I watched the documentary. I can't even tell you the name of the documentary, oh, wow. um, but all I remember is the impact it had. And that evening, I decided. No more fast food. Wow. I decided I wasn't going to eat after six. You know what it is to be on the road and traveling and oh. preaching and ministry and all of that. You're always mm -hmm. eating late. You're always eating a bunch of fast food yeah. and all of that. I changed everything, stopped eating after six, changed my whole diet. Within four months, I lost 75 pounds. And wow. then subsequent that 95 pounds, all natural. Um, all I didn't natural. change anything. I still eat what I want to eat. Mm -hmm. uh, I quit messing with that white sugar because I was a dessert man. 
I had a dessert oh. for breakfast, dessert for lunch. You helping me, Bishop? Dinner. You helping me? Oh my God! Listen, Chili's had this dessert. It was the Chili's restaurant, and they had this dessert called the Paradise Pie. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Y'all ain't said nothing to me. It, it was incredible. Yep. And, and I would have one or two or three or four of those a week. One, two, three, or four. One, two, three, or four a week. And, uh, and I cut all of that out. And so to this day, I maintain that same wow. discipline. I don't eat after six. Um, I don't, and I got to be honest, a lot of people think that you go in the gym a lot. Listen, I don't go to the gym at all. Um, really? I do, I jog three, four times a week. Yeah. Uh, I do my ab rolls every night. For the first time in my life, I got a six pack. Listen. <laughs> I, I, I was. I keep Tell us it real. How to get I, that bishop. Listen, I can keep it real. I was. I never was able to see that before. And make a long story short, that's what we did. So I changed those eating habits. And even during quarantine, I had to check myself mm. because I said, "You're doing way too much with these carbs. You're doing way too much with carbs. stuff that I wouldn't normally eat." And and I I can't cook really. I can do breakfast, but I can't cook other meals. So okay. that means the majority majority of what you cook is going to be heavy carbs when you can't cook. Exactly. And, um, so wow. the, the importance of that, I think, is this, especially during this time of quarantine and isolation, is that, you know, don't lose any progress that you've made and use this as an opportunity to create some new habits mm. um, that are going to help keep you healthy. Because at the end of the day, if you got a pulse, God still has a plan. That's amazing. That's amazing. Wow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wow. Well, well I'm, I'm glad we were able to, to cover that. Bishop, what I've been trying to do on my page, because we hear enough about uh, the CDC and, and drugs that they're trying to approve by the FDAC, um, and I've really been trying to keep my focus on the page, right. on the fact that 84% of those persons that have been affected or infected indirectly or, 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 or directly with COVID-19, the uh, novel um, coronavirus, they have right. recovered, and right. some are doing very, very well. And right. so I, I, I really wish we could kind of speak a little bit into um, into that, because when it first came, when we first on the bout of February, we heard the first couple of cases of scripture that really helped me in, in, in Proverbs. I think it's like around uh, Proverbs chapter 18 that says the spirit of a man will mm. sustain his infirmity. And mm. so I was just focusing on the fact that if we feed our spirit, you know, and build our faith, I, I, although COVID is as powerful as it is, there are some things that we could do even with our mindset, with the things we speak out of our mouth that can still right. be a shield to us amidst it. So can we just speak about, I think, the mindset that we should have in terms of we can focus on the fact that 80 something percent of the people are recovering. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, the, the, I think what's so important, <clears throat> what's so important, somebody said you're going to bless us with a song. Are you going to bless us with a song? <laughs> you know, I get shy in front of people. I, 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 oh, my God. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> um, is, is this, as I think one of the things that's been so important is this statement. No fear, no anxiety, anxiety no panic. Wow. No fear, no anxiety, no panic. Okay. Um, the reality yeah, is, is that you're right. Most people are recovering and doing well. Yeah. And I think one of the things that's so important to understand is this. Even when we look at the time that all of this happened, it's very significant. It's a supernatural time. What do I mean by that? Uh, we're at the beginning of a new year. We're at the beginning of a new decade. If God allowed this to be the beginning, that means God intends to do something supernatural here on after. Mm. Uh, whatever God allows crisis is because there's something that he wants to change. Wow. Uh, and so this gives us a great opportunity to realize, you know, when an eagle, when an eagle takes flight, an eagle just doesn't, when they're uh, on a high peak, an eagle just doesn't step off the ledge and start flying. For an eagle to get a lift under its wings, Doc, what the eagle has to do is it has to dive first. Wow. Meaning it has to go down so that it's going to get the lift it needs to increase. And I believe this time for the body of Christ, this is where uh, what seems to be uh, a, a great calamity God wants to use to take his people to a new altitude. We got biblical example for how this already happened. So yes, sir. coronavirus began to break out uh, before the spring biblical feast, right? Uh, mm. feast of Passover, feast of unleavened bread, Feast of First Fruits, which we refer to as Resurrection Sunday or Easter. And so what's amazing is that's the same time. Here we are, Exodus 10, 11, 12, 13, Come those on. chapters where the 10 plagues came. And those 10 plagues came, but they were an indication that God was getting ready to release his people from 430 Ooh. years of slavery. Come on, so what am I trying to say? That coronavirus did not catch God off guard. 
In fact, coronavirus is going to be used for God to get his people to a further place and to a greater place. It was the plague that ended up getting them into purpose. Y'all let go say that. The plague got them into purpose. The plague got them into purpose. The plague did it. And so after the plague, and here's what's amazing, (laughs) is that those 10 plagues, the Bible says that it was happening to the Egyptians, but it wasn't happening over in Goshen where the Hebrews stayed. Which means God says, I'm going to make a difference between my people Come on, and sir. the Egyptians. And what everybody has to realize is the reason you can't walk in fear, the reason you can't walk in anxiety or panic is for this. is because, watch me, while they may have had evil intent with it, we are exempt from it. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. While they may have had evil intent, we are exempt. And so it's a supernatural time. God always used calamity and crisis and plagues to be able to get his people into purpose. And I believe Mm. that's what's happening now. And most importantly, I'll say this, the reason you can't walk in fear, anxiety, or panic is because the world's in quarantine right now. God has shut the whole world down. Whole world. Quarantine means isolation. Isolation is for us to deal with our individual issues. Mm. In other words, God says, I shut the whole world down so that you would have the time to deal with your individual issues. So when you come out of this, you're going to be better than when you went into this. So there's no need to have fear, anxiety, or I dare somebody to put that on the screen. No fear, no anxiety, (laughs) no no pain. No fear. Put that on the screen, y'all. I'm serious. Yes, sir. Wow. And we we, we really need to write that over on the table of our heart because... Faith, even as a, 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 a babe coming to Christ, I remember the bishop saying to us, because I joined the military, uh, I, I, and, and the time that I really got saved for real right. was when I was in Saudi Arabia. And I remember wow. when I was getting ready to come to the altar, the, the pastor, the chaplain said, faith will invite God into the situation, but fear always attracts the enemy. Mm. He said, so if you're that person that feels like your chest is getting tight and your hands are sweating, you have a spirit of fear that really is beginning to distract you from hearing right. the voice of God. But if you will allow faith right. into the room, that's what he was saying. Right. Faith is what will take over. And so you are so right, Bishop, those words, that that that, that fear and anxiety. I mean, we cannot fear. And, no. and, and, and the thing that my mother used to always say, but I never understood it, is we would be afraid of getting... Uh, the measles or the chicken pox as mm-hmm. children. And my mother said, if come you look on. at the book of Job, the thing that you fear most will come, come upon you. Comes upon so you. you can't be around here fearing something. You got to use no. your mouth to speak into the atmosphere and you command. Do. You got to command the atmosphere. And there so one thing you can't do is you can't have faith and fear at the same time. So mm-hmm. you have really helped us, man. Well, can you just help us like right now um, right. with the whole situation? And I know I love how you said the isolation really allows us to deal with our personal um, with our individual. personal issue and in, in our individual right. issues and we will come out better. I get a lot of people to come on my page right now uh, that's just talk about provision and mm. God's hand of provision, although we're dealing with. what we're dealing with they're like well i get it your song says god will provide for me but i don't know how to pay rent my right. stimulus check has not come through right. uh i haven't been able to hear back from the workforce commission what can we say to people that are just mm-hmm. in that place where they need to see a move of god like now absolutely absolutely so so here's the deal um the same god that did it last year <laughs> last decade <laughs> I need somebody to type on the screen. He's still <laughs> same the God, same that's God. It. Yeah. Um, so, so here's what's amazing, right? The children of Israel, 10 plagues. The last plague is the firstborn sons of the Egyptians died and the firstborn of their livestock died. Most people miss the fact that it was their livestock too. Um, why is that significant? Because if only the sons would die, you could argue that when they went to school, they were poisoned collectively. Okay. God wanted to make sure uh, that they knew it was him that was behind it. What am I saying? Sometimes your nose are divine. Sometimes your nose, sometimes your delays are divine. But what do I mean by that? In that scenario, the Bible says that night, it was the night of Passover. That night, Pharaoh come, calls Moses and Aaron in. And listen to what he tells him. He says, up. Uh. Now, wait a minute. Why do you need to say up? Uh? 
unless you're saying to them, God has approved your altitude increase. Huh. I want to speak to somebody that your altitude is increasing. Ooh. And you started out looking like it was decreasing, but the altitude of your life is increasing. Uh, in, in aviation, altitude increases have to be approved by the flight controller. <laughs> and you can't just decide you're going to another level. You have to make a My petition God. and they have to approve the petition Come on, Doc. for you to go higher. And what I'm trying to tell you, those that are saying, oh, my God, how am I going to get this done? Is that God wanted to see how you would handle it mm. so that he could approve an altitude increase. But let's go further. The Bible <laughs> says that the night of the Passover, he says, get up, increase your altitude. He said, mm. and go, which means after 10 no's, they got to go. You got to learn how to handle your nose right because eventually your no is going to become a go. Come he on, said Doc. Ten times. No, 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 no. Now watch this, Doc. The ten times the Bible says God hardened Pharaoh's heart, which means God was the one that shut it down. Y'all yeah. ain't going to talk. Yeah. God was yeah. the one that said no because he uh -huh. wanted to see how his people would respond. For some of you, you can't see it yet because God says, I need you to learn how to trust me when you can't trace me. I need you to learn how to follow me when it feels like you can't figure me out. Right? Good Lord. Good so Lord. Knows, and all of the no's are God-ordained no's. Pharaoh gives them an up and a go. And here's what's amazing. The Bible says they leave Egypt having plundered the Egyptians. They leave with silver, they leave with gold, they leave with clothing, and they leave with livestock and sheep. Come on. Stop. Which means cash, clothes, and cars weren't the promise. They were <laughs> on their way to the promised land, and God made them rich before they got there. <laughs> I'm trying to tell somebody tonight, what you worried about ain't even your promise. <laughs> God says, I got you covered. And when it comes to your cash, cars, clothes, your rent, all of that, your mortgage, all of that. God says, well, I'm taking you is bigger than money. I'm taking you to a place of favor, to a place of provision. And watch this. This isn't just me talking to hype you up. This is Bible. Bible we have a biblical example of how what happens right now in the world how he's already taken care of it. So the reason we don't have to be in fear about provision Come on. is because we already have biblical proof of how these things work for us. He's done it before? Already done it. Already oh, done my it. God. I, I, I like how you say he was waiting on them, not for, not for them to react, but to respond. To respond. And I think that's what moves his, what moves his hand. Absolutely. You know, what moves his hand. I used to always say when, when I would be looking for God when I was young and, and right. having my first kid and was waiting on provision, I would always say, oh my God, what is what what real faith is, is allowing God to do what he says he's going to do, right. but not giving him a deadline. Right. That's what me and my prayer, he said, are you giving God a deadline of when he's going to come right. through? Right. Because that's not real faith. Right, right. And so that's what, yeah. I, I love how you brought the plagues in. That's how God teaches that's us. That's amazing. Man. You can watch I show some about the timeline, though? Please. Because sometimes please, you're please. like, God, it's taking so long. Can I yeah. tell you a delay? <laughs> the delay is us. Ten is the biblical number of divine perfection. Stop. Wow. Wait a minute. God says, I wanted to perfect something in you. Mm. And I used your enemy so you could deal with your inner me. And I was perfecting something in you. It took you that long. It didn't take me that long. Wow. For everybody watching tonight that says, God, when? I want to challenge you to change your question. God, what am I missing? Come on. What do I need to look at? If there's something in me you're trying to develop and that's me. bigger than money. I'm going to tell you. You were born to do more than pay bills and die. You I were like born that. to do more to just have babies and die. You were born to rule, reign, conquer, and subdue. And to do that, God sometimes will use what looks like a mess to say, I'm perfecting something in you. Ooh. And as soon as you get it, you can get out. <laughs> Let me back. <laughs> You're not getting as soon so that's as you the get it. That's you when he out. can, okay. And I like how you said we're enemy. And, and T.D. Jake says it like this. The enemy is the inner me. He's dealing mm -hmm. with the inside mm -hmm. of me, the inner me, my mm. soul, my mind, my emotions, my right. will. He's dealing with my soul, with my dealing suitcase. With Come dealing on, see, see, you, 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 you over that seminary there. So I, I, I know you always uh, was already thinking about that suitcase word. <laughs> 
but that whole flesh. And I, and I love how God is doing this because um, even even being home as an artist, I, p- people laugh at me when I say it. I say, but I low key am going back to like the basics. Do you remember right. years ago when God had this song and the song would just say, I miss my time with you, those mm-hmm. moments together. And God was saying, Although you, you're you traveling the world and you're in three mm-hmm. and four markets a week, that's admirable. That's wonderful. But he said, I miss my time with you. I miss pouring mm-hmm. into you, giving you the message that you really need to go convey on my behalf in the first place. And so what right. I found out was, was I really conveying your message or was I just on repeat? Was I just going through the motions? Wow. So wow. really, this is allowing new fresh oil. Right. Uh, to get revelation knowledge. And I mean, I'm right. reading scriptures that I read in my early years of being saved. But right. the revelation knowledge, I'm crying like a baby. Like, it's, it's, it's I mean, you speak in a whole nother way now. So Absolutely. at 53, I'm getting a whole different revelation than when I got, you know, when I was first embracing. So I, I think, right. like you said, God has a purpose for this whole Absolutely. thing. We're definitely going to be greater. We're going to be at a whole nother level of faith Absolutely. when we get on the other side of COVID-19. So, Absolutely. man, you're blessing me. Now, listen, if you if you have not uh, uh, told somebody to tune into this broadcast, you you probably are backslidden. You, you're being selfish. You get no. it all for yourself. Go tell somebody and keep up. Bishop, let's get your page and all of that. Yes, uh, to, you know, we're going to, I got a couple yeah. more questions, but let them yes, know, sir. what is your Uh, website and all the stuff with people don't want to stay in touch with. Absolutely. It's all Bishop Foreman. So Instagram, Bishop Foreman, Twitter, Bishop Foreman, Facebook, Bishop Foreman, TikTok, Bishop Foreman. Uh, <laughs> I got a TikTok. I got a TikTok. I'm scared of TikTok. I didn't do the dance, though. I didn't do the dance, though. <laughs> That's I didn't what I'm the... saying. I can't do nothing about the holy that, but I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn. I'm going to learn. <laughs> but Bishop, now, I'm going to personally tonight, because you are edifying me, I'm personally going to, I'm sewing. And, and wow. I'm, I'm, I'm sewing myself, but I'm going I'm to challenge y'all. Now, I'm, you know, I don't come on here and y'all know I don't think I've ever done this for maybe one other time. But I'm wow. sewing personally because you always got to sew where you want to go. And we're going to continue, so don't y'all log off. But I'm going to sew, you wow. know, at least $100. But I want everybody wow. that can to join me with at least a, a, a 25 to thirty dollars wow. C, and I tell y'all why later because I really believe on my page I don't want to just be known as just singing. And this time I've mm. sang to you, I've given you twelve albums. But mm. at this point, I really want to see God really uh, sow into you and edify and encourage you to where even in the midst of this, you can be like a tree. One thing mm. about a tree that I've learned: a tree that's planted by the living uh, uh, rivers of water, they can be fed by that. But the other thing about a tree, man, let me tell you something. When you are really planted, Mm -hmm. I don't care how the winds, the storms, the COVID, the this, the Spanish, all of these things can come. But a tree can really stand if it's been properly fed. And so I really want to feed you on my page. I don't want to entertain you. We're watching churches right now. And I got several colleagues from Howard University and and different places who say that their persons are not logging on to the live. Bishop, you probably don't have this problem. They're not logging on. The mindset of millennials, they're not really uh, contributing financially. And wow. so to keep the doors of the church open, um, it is your reasonable service to do that. But because they have not been conditioned mm. to make giving a part of their worship experience, wow. they're not contributing at a time where the church really needs you. So wow. even on my page, I've never asked you guys for anything other than about my records. But Bishop Foreman has spoken into my life tonight, wow. my spirit. Uh, what is your cash app for people who want to do it? Yes, sir. It's Bishop Foreman. It's Bishop oh. Foreman. It's, it's Bishop Foreman. No, Everything no. is Bishop Foreman. That's Cast it? Dollar sign, Bishop Foreman. Dollar really? Sign Bishop Foreman. How yes, did sir. you lock that down? You just locked that down like that, bitch. Yep. But listen, they just they just made it happen. They made you it just happen. went up there and said, I don't care how many other Foremans they are. That's one Bishop Foreman. There's <laughs> only one people's Bishop. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, Bishop, let me ask you this, because being in Denver, Colorado, it, are there? do they have a lot of black people there? No. Oh, <laughs> okay. No, no. But but can I can I add one thing to what you just said? Yeah. Um. Even even if you said that's something that you you've never done before. One of the things, if I could just share a brief brief yeah. little bit about my testimony. So, I started my first business when I was twelve. I got into ministry at the same time when I was twelve. I started as a drummer. Uh, I was oh. bad. I got good, and then uh, and then I started doing <laughs> worship and leading choirs and stuff. And they inducted me in the Gospel Music Hall of Fame. I was so honored uh, for that, and inspired by your music. I remember that "Rain All Us" was one of the first oh. songs of yours. And when we 
we right sing that song. I just go in. I mean, I would go all the way in. And uh, but in all of that, um, what was amazing in starting my business, I've always been like a king. The Bible says a king and a priest. And so, uh, you know, you've got in one man, two rounds. It's Melchizedek. Some people teach it where you got kings and then you got priests. So you got spiritual people, then you got business people, and they're supposed to fund that. That's not what the Bible teaches. Wow. The Bible says that Melchizedek was the king of Salem. And he was the high priest of God. One man, two realms. And that's how everybody watching right now, that's how you are. You uh -huh. are one woman or you're one man, but you got two realms. Two realms. So you get to be successful and spiritual. Y'all ain't talking. You oh, get to pray oh, and oh, slay. Oh. It's not either or. It's pray both of them. Both of them. Come on, Doc. <laughs> and that's how I was. And the only reason I bring that up is because after building that business, the, the, the industry collapsed. And those who, who follow me are connected, you've heard a little bit of this story before, that industry collapsed. When that industry collapsed, I just opened a brand new office, just hired over 50 plus folks for that office. We were doing amazing business. Friday, at the end of the day, it looked amazing. Saturday morning, I watched on CNN everything I had spent years building. I watched it collapse. What am I telling wow. you that for? Is that in that I said, God, if you teach me how to get out of this, because as you can imagine, after building that, yeah, then you go into a deep financial valley. Sure. I said, Lord, if you teach me how to get out of this, I said, I will teach your people how to do it. I wrote my first book called Getting Your Finances in Order on how I got out of that valley. I gave my way out. And today, mm. I only wow. said this to give God the glory. I don't yeah. owe anybody a dime. Harvest Church doesn't owe anybody a dime because wow. we use the principles of song. So to hear that you don't normally do that, you maybe only do it once, once or twice. I know we're tapping into something because there's a grace on me to get people out of debt. Wow. There's a wow. grace on me for people um, to go through hell and come back. Look at the ice cream cone. Go come on, come on. Because you definitely through. don't look like you've been through any of oh, any I'm you. I'm telling you. I'm tell it's this lighting, though. The lighting is helping. <laughs> <laughs> That's the That's the light. But, it's um, amazing. But, okay, yes, go ahead. So, so, but to Denver, Denver's a whole nother animal. I've um, never been there. I, I think one time I was booked to come there one time with Mr. Dennis Leonard. Okay. And we had like a, a, a mechanical, we had an issue with the plane. Wow. And I could not make it. I was coming in on Saturday to do his Sunday, and we, we could not do it. It was bad weather. Uh, but I, I was like, Denver, when I read that the Denver Post was constantly writing things about you, I said, is he in Denver? Because I wow. said, that's kind of different for us, but I'm, I'm I'm honored to see that. But I but just to piggyback off what you said, at 20 some years old, I was at a at a crossroad of struggling. Like, do I pay my bills? Do I pay mm. my tithes? And so one time I made the confession. I said, I told my wife at the time, uh, I said we can't afford the tithe. And this mm. old lady was listening to me. I was one of the counselors. I came from the Bishop Nathaniel Holcomb there, Christian House of Prayer, right, Central right, Texas. Right. And the older lady who was one of the counselors, I was telling my wife, I said, you can give them $20 or 15 something like that. But I wow. said, we can't afford the tithe. And wow. that woman said, you cannot afford not to not and I'll tell you why. She said, because when you don't give God what's his, you're cursed with a curse. And I, I had never been reading uh, Malachi and all of that back then. I, I just wasn't that deep. I was right. brand new to the body of Christ. But I will say that I got to a level by the... age 25 wow. to where my offering was twice as much mm. as what my tithe was yes. because that's just the revelation of giving i had by yes. 26 i built my very first house and my wife and i paid cash for that yes house. We come built, on here can you and before i turned 30 <clears throat> and i remember the neighbors they were all much older than i was bishop and they kept coming to me every day who's financing your house and so one day I just I just rolled up in and I said, Jesus Christ is financing my house. Right, right, right. You got a little hood on him. You got a little right. hood on him. I said, gee, they said, you mean Jesus? Is that a bank? I was like, oh my God. Right, you cannot, right. you, you cannot do it. But what I've learned is you cannot be God given. So as I said before, Bishop Foreman has always been a consult consistent source of strength, encouragement, very consistent. It's a lot of people you run into out here, and it is not the case. But every time I've gotten on your page. Uh, got on your live. God has always spoken something profound wow. to me. And so I said, I want my followers and people who who, who invest in me and, and, and looking at what I'm doing to, to be experienced, to, to experience you as I have. And so uh, wow. I'm honored that we were able to do it tonight. You are a soul winner. Wow. That's important. What would you say to people who are listening on this live and uh, 
just, you know, at that, at that funny place in life where unequivocally they can't say where right. they are. Right. Well, you know, you're right. And the Bible says that he make us fishers of men. And what has always been a passion of mine, and even in Denver, because it's 46 out of 50 for lowest church attendance in the nation. Wow. There's only four places with lower church attendance. There are 62,000 African-Americans in the Denver metro area, uh, which is out of about 2.1 million people. Um, so Harvest is multicultural, multi-generational. We call it like the United Nations of Church. And to God be all of the glory. But you're right. Yes. Um, I believe that God, watch me, for those that feel far from God, the reality is, is that you're not as far as you think. Wow. Um, the truth is this, is that 2,000 years ago, God stepped in a body. That body was called Jesus. That body died so we could have life and life more abundantly. And not just to save us from hell, but to save us from ourselves. Mm. If, if there's anything that we learn from this coronavirus outbreak is the difference a day can make. How uh, quickly things can change. Quickly. And so to those that are like, mm. I don't know where things stand. Listen, we're going to drop the net right now. Yeah. If you are watching right now and you've never giving your life to Jesus. Tonight is your night. God is yeah. coming to get you tonight. Um, you thought she's going to hear some singing, and he might still sing. I don't know, but tonight, <laughs> tonight God's coming to get you. Secondly, if you've given your life to the Lord, but you've not been faithful to him, and tonight you want to recommit yourself to the Lord, tonight yeah. is your night. And third and finally, be like, listen, I don't know where things stand with God. Yeah. Tonight is your night. I'm going to count to three, and I want you to respond with one of two things, the yeah. hand wavy emoji or it's me, because we're going to go on and see some souls come to Jesus yeah. tonight. This yeah. is what ministry is all about. It's about yeah. changing lives. You need to become a Christian, recommit yourself to the Lord, or be sure, on yeah. the count of three, I want you to do the hand wavy emoji or say, it's me right now. Yeah. One, yeah. two, three. If that's you, I want you to respond right now. Yes. I want you to respond right now. And everybody else, if you say, if you know the Lord, I want you praying that folks respond yes, right Lord. now. Let's yes, see Lord. some souls come to the Lord on Instagram yes, Lord. live. Come on, I'm waiting Jesus on you. There we go. Yes. I see you. Yes. I see you. That's one. That's yes. two. I see you. Yeah. I see you. Come on, don't feel no shame. Don't feel no mm -hmm. shame. Don't feel that's three. No yes. guilt, no condemnation. Don't feel yeah. like nobody's gonna beat you up or beat you down. No, we're gonna give you life tonight. Yeah. Come on, come on, just yes, respond. It's me or the hand with the emoji. I will wait for you. Ten, yes, I'm gonna Lord. count down and wait for you. Nine, I yes, will wait Lord. for you. Yes, Eight, Lord. seven, I'm waiting Good. on you. Six, I'm waiting yes. on you. Five, I'm waiting yes. on you. Just do the hand with the emoji. Just say it's me. Four, yes, three. Yes. Two, I'm waiting on you. Yes. One, look at those hands that were just up there. Wow. Because you just said, it's me. Wow. It's me. I want to lead you in this prayer. Everybody pray yes. this with me. Say, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, name of thank Jesus. you. I see you. Keep responding. Keep yes. responding. Thank you for dying in my place. Yes, Say, Lord. I believe that you are Lord and King. Yes, Say, Lord. in this moment, I give yes. you my life. Yes, Take over in yes. Jesus' name. Jesus Listen, if you God. prayed that prayer for the first time, the Bible mm -hmm. says that you are born again. You are a Christian. That doesn't mean you're perfect. It just means that you're on a journey to where, watch me, your life is going to have a sense of purpose. Secondly, mm -hmm. if you were far from the Lord, you just got that connection together. Several hands just went up, Dr. Pugh. Several wow. hands just went up on an Instagram live. Wow. On a Thursday night, people come into Jesus. <laughs> Can I give them an instruction to take? Please Can do. Please. Here, do. Here's what I would do. If this was normal, if this was the harvest thing and a harvest live, here's what I would ask you to do. Can I get a few of you to type this on the screen? Text decision to 59769. You yeah. just made that decision. Take your phone, snap, screenshot it if you're looking on your mobile device in case you don't want to get off the live. Screenshot it. When you send that text, we're going to text you right back with some instructions on what yeah. to do next. I see you, Bridget. Y'all are still responding to the yeah. call for salvation wow. and recommitting. I Look see you. God. So what? all you got to do is send that text, and we're going to text you right back some instructions on what to do next. I gave my life to the Lord. I recommitted wow. myself to the Lord. What do I do next? I'm getting counts five, six, seven. We'll, get a, we'll see what the total count wow. is that came to the Lord tonight. I, listen, I love seeing people come to the Lord. <laughs> listen, oh, my God. This, this is the avenue. This is places that we can't fly to. But, Bishop, your ministry, the anointing is able to reach them right where they are. This right. is what this this is God's plan. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. There it is. There it well, is. Bishop, I, I want just one more time. Uh, if somebody could type Bishop's cash app information on there. This was like my Bible study. I've been so busy doing lives and recordings and stuff. I feel like as a virtual worship leader, I'm working more than I was. I travel. Yeah, building, right. 
And so I missed the word on last night, but tonight the Lord really poured into my spirit, really edified, really encouraged, really strengthened me to stay in the race and to keep the faith. And so you were instrumental, man of God. And so I'm wow. sending my seed as soon as we hang up. And if somebody typed that on there, oh, there it is again. So everybody, Bishop Foreman, this is Cash App Information. Please be generous. Please sow. I always have been taught that you sow where you want to go. And if you wow. know that this is good ground in just a few minutes, I don't know how many of you have ever been on live and, and five, six people gave their lives to Christ. It's never happened on my page. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so wow. we're making history tonight. Here we go. Come on. <laughs> here. We're starting something. Yes. You yes. Start with me now. I'm yes. You next week or whenever you can get i'll call your office and get on your schedule but we could go on facebook i've just recently stopped building up my instagram but my facebook is over a half a million people i would love for you to come on there if you got yes, a sir. day where you can do this again 15 yes, 20 30 minutes with the type of anointing you got you can do it in 15 minutes yes sir. Can, let's get it done we can let's be that pop of those in less than 20 minutes but i love you man i'm yes, gonna sir, let you me. go uh before yes, we go anybody um who knows somebody that is um, affected by COVID-19 uh, and believe in God, we do want to just decree and declare that yes. from the crown of your head yes. to the sole of your feet that you're every which way made whole. We speak to your organs and every tissue in your body. Yes. We say line up with the word of God. Uh, there's a song that I got mm -hmm. in radio right now that says God wants to hear you every way you heard. And we come out of uh, the third uh, uh, John chapter two, and I think the periphery, periphery goes down to one through four. Says that uh, that God wishes above all things all that we things. prosper and be, be in good health, even as our souls would prosper. And for Him to wish above all things right. that He can provide for us and give to us, He wants us to be healed and right. to have prosperity. And yes, so sir. I'm going to do, do a little bit of this song, but really share this song, share this lie uh, with people to let them know that there's a song called "God Wants to Hear You." I'm not trying to sell you music. You can go get it for free on my YouTube page with a video. And the song, as we close, I just simply said, God wants to heal you. Yes. Everywhere you heard. Yeah. Everywhere you heard. God will see you through. Mm. He'll take the pain away. Watch this. God shall provide for you. Yes, sir. Each and every day. Here's mm. what you got to do. Lift your hands and say, Lord, I need you. Thank you, Jesus. I need you right away. And there's healing for your sorrow. Mm. Healing for your pain. There is healing for your spirit. And the shelter from the rain. My request is, Lord, send your healing for this week. We know that there is a bomb in Gilead. How many know there really is, there is, there is, there is a bomb in Gilead to heal your soul. Just declare this, there's healing for my soul, yes, healing for my soul. God bless you tonight. Yes, I'm not sir. trying to keep y'all, Bishop. I love you, much, love man you. of God. We love will be you, in man. touch. I got to hang up so I can sow my seed. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> love you. Final? Love y'all. Love you too, man. Any final right. things you have for us? No, no. Again, thank you for the invitation. I can't wait to do it with you again. And yes, uh, again, folks can connect with us. Everything Bishop Foreman. Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, website, all of that. And, uh, and what I'm going to do for those mm -hmm. that sow tonight, yeah. I am literally, uh, I'm going to take your names in prayer. Every name, I'm going to take it in prayer tonight. I'm going to pray three God. things for you. I'm going to pray that you maximize your quarantine. Mm. I'm going to pray that debts fall off of you. I'm anointed for that. And yeah. Third and finally, I'm going to pray that this is the best year and the best decade of your life yet. Those are my prayers. So I'm going to wait for all of this. Since you did the, and just so y'all know, I didn't ask him to do that. That's yeah, the only thing. We had no idea. 
And you were led by the spirit today. You said you've never done it before. So we never. made two sets of history tonight. All history. <laughs> Come on, history makers. Come That's on, the dog. It's you. This year, history makers. Are you doing a co- But we don't know yet. But we don't know yet because we got to. Right, right. It's scheduled to be in August. We took the dates back because of everything going on. So it's happening this year. One thing, you ain't going to stop me. So we're going to do it this year. <laughs> When we do it, I don't know. I'm going to make my way there. If I got to ride a horse down there, I'll be there. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. (laughs) I love love you, you, man. Appreciate you. All right, God. All right. God bless.